Why did the U.S. invade Libya, one of the greatest economies and most powerful countries in Africa? Why did the U.S. kill Muammar Gaddafi, the head of Libya, and the greatest leader of Africa? Some say it was to protect Libyans from its so-called barbaric leader, while others say it was due to its vast oil reserves. No doubt the U.S. has a history of greed and invasions due to this greed. Wherever there was gold and oil, the U.S. troops invaded with the excuse of saving civilians. On a lighter note, it's also said that if the U.S. comes to know that heaven is full of gold and oil, its president will order its troops to go to churches and pray harder. However, the reason behind invading Libya was different. What was it? Well, the leaked emails of then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton reveal that the UD did it because Gaddafi was preparing to launch the gold dinar, a currency backed by gold, having the power to replace the United States dollar. Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about less known and hidden black history, culture, arts, and lost civilization. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. In this episode, we will debunk how the U.S. dissolved Muammar Gaddafi's plan of gold dinar. Let's get started. Muammar Gaddafi is the man who gave the concept to unite Africa and form the United States of Africa. He is the man who wanted to give an international gold currency called gold dinar, replacing the United States dollar. That's why he threatened the U.S. and its centuries-long hegemony over the world. However, the United States of America could not kill Gaddafi directly. Otherwise, it would have looked evil. People would have known that America wanted Libya's oil and gold and wanted to dissolve the grand concept of the gold dinar. Hence, it did grand propaganda against Muammar Gaddafi and portrayed him as a barbaric ruler, threatening the Libyans and the entire world. But this was not so easy for the U.S. The U.S. and its allies were pivotal in creating a negative perception of Muammar Gaddafi among the Libyan population and the international community. They employed various tactics to accomplish this goal. To begin with, the U.S. government and media depicted Gaddafi as a ruthless dictator who employed violence and repression to hold on to power. They highlighted his human rights violations, including torture, extrajudicial killings, and detention without trial. This portrayal aimed to paint Gaddafi as a leader who was not only oppressive, but also posed a threat to his own people. But none of this was ever proved and there was no evidence. Furthermore, the U.S. and its allies supported the Libyan opposition groups against Gaddafi's regime. They provided them with both financial and military assistance, contributing to the narrative that Gaddafi was facing a popular uprising. The media widely reported this narrative, and it justified NATO's military intervention. The U.S. and its allies also imposed economic sanctions on Libya and sought to isolate Gaddafi diplomatically. They expelled Libyan diplomats from their countries, urged other nations to impose economic sanctions, and prevented Gaddafi from traveling overseas. These actions were intended to isolate Gaddafi and make him appear as a global outcast. Finally, the U.S. and its allies disseminated propaganda to discredit Gaddafi further. They spread unfounded rumors and false information, such as accusations that he had committed genocide or supported terrorism. This information was frequently presented as fact without any supporting evidence, and it helped shape a negative image of Gaddafi in many people's minds. These tactics created a negative image of Gaddafi among the Libyan people and the international community. This negative perception and support for the opposition and NATO's eventual military intervention significantly contributed to Gaddafi's downfall. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. However, at this point, you might ask why America would do all this just to avoid gold dinar. If that's the case, you should understand how gold dinar was a threat to the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has a dominant role in the global economy, providing America with unprecedented economic power. International currency transactions, foreign exchange reserves, and world debt rely heavily on the dollar. As a result, the United States significantly influences any country that imports or exports goods and services. In 2016, the publication of Clinton's emails revealed another agenda behind the Libyan war. The primary objective was to prevent the demise of the American dollar by avoiding the creation of an independent hard currency in Africa. The new currency would have freed the continent from its economic dependence and posed a significant threat to the dollar and the euro. 
Gaddafi urged African and Muslim countries to unite and create a new currency backed by gold in the months following the military intervention in 2011. This new currency would have ensured that countries sell their oil and other natural resources in return for gold rather than U.S. dollars. This idea would have altered the global economic balance, with countries' wealth dependent on the amount of gold they possessed, not the amount of U.S. dollars they traded or held. In Western economies, banks are the main source of money creation, not governments. Originally, all currency reserves worldwide were backed by gold. However, in 1933, President Franklin Roosevelt replaced domestic gold with central bank-created reserves. Although gold remained the reserve currency for other countries until 1944, that year saw the establishment of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. Their goal was to globally unify the bank-created money system, with 44 countries agreeing that the U.S. dollar would become the world currency, created privately as debt with interest. This system required a steady stream of debtors, and over the next half century, most developing countries, primarily in Africa, became indebted to the IMF. The reason is this new order was structurally developed for exploitation. The loans came with several strings attached, such as structural adjustment programs that hindered economic growth. Under the agreement, the U.S. dollar was pegged to gold, while other global currencies were pegged to the U.S. dollar. However, in the 1970s, when the U.S. could no longer maintain the dollar's gold backing, it made a swift deal with OPEC to use oil to back the currency, creating the petrodollar. In 1971, President Richard Nixon announced that the dollar would no longer be exchangeable for gold a move intended to secure U.S. dominance and stimulate economic growth for the superpower. However, any country purchasing oil from OPEC would have to exchange its currency into U.S. dollars before the sale was complete. Additionally, oil and other natural resources were priced in U.S. currency, not in the currency of their country of origin. As a result, if the U.S. dollar loses value, the natural resources also lose value. This system provided two immediate benefits to the U.S. It increased global demand for U.S. dollars and allowed the U.S. to purchase oil and other resources with a currency it could print at will. The global financial system was created and sustained not purely by economics but by politics, specifically through the Saudi Arabia deal that replaced gold as the world reserve currency and ultimate store of value. The U.S. dollar took that place, transferring the ultimate store of value from gold to the U.S. dollar. Now let's know how the U.S. involved the West and NATO in killing Muammar Gaddafi. In 2009, President Muhammad Gaddafi seized control of the African Union, an organization he co-founded and had long wanted to reform to enhance his pan-African reputation. The West was unsure how Gaddafi would wield his position as head of the African Union. During the early 2000s, Gaddafi sought to cultivate better relations with Western nations and corporations by offering to open up vital sectors of the Libyan economy to foreign investment. However, the 2003 invasion of Iraq and Gaddafi's public warning at an Arab League summit that America could come after him next, akin to Saddam Hussein, left Western leaders skeptical of his true intentions. Gaddafi championed the age-old aspiration of transforming Africa into a massive unified state that could exert significant global influence. He frequently advocated for immediate unity and establishing a singular currency, army, and passport across the continent. Yet the idea of a gold-backed single currency did not appeal to the West, who sought to safeguard their interests. In 2011, then-French President Nicolas Sarkozy reportedly deemed Gaddafi a threat to global financial security. One of the emails uncovered from Hillary Clinton's private email server revealed that the Libyan government possessed 143 tons of gold and a similar amount of silver, intended to be used to create a pan-African currency based on the Libyan gold dinar. This initiative aimed to offer French-printed currency using African countries an alternative, which influenced Sarkozy's decision to support the Libyan invasion. France's motives were driven by a desire to increase its share of Libya's oil production, strengthen its presence in North Africa, enhance Sarkozy's political situation domestically, empower the French military, and address apprehensions regarding Gaddafi's long-term plan to displace France as the dominant force in Francophone Africa. Notably, humanitarian concerns were absent from these objectives. Ultimately, the invasion of Libya was about money, power, and oil, as well as preserving France's stronghold on Francophone Africa. Gaddafi's actions significantly threatened those in power, 
as he went beyond merely selling oil in a different currency. He was meticulously planning the Pan-African Gold Currency, set to launch in 2023, which would have promoted African self-reliance and potentially disrupted the global financial system. By organizing an African monetary coup and demonstrating the possibility of achieving financial independence, Gaddafi became a major player in the world of finance. Listen to his confidence in his power and what he could achieve. The West could see what Gaddafi was capable of. The Great Man-Made River was one of Gaddafi's most ambitious infrastructure projects, which transformed arid regions of Libya into thriving agricultural areas. The $33 billion project was fully funded by Libya's state-owned bank, interest-free and with zero foreign debt. Despite being recognized as the largest irrigation system in the world, Western media was reluctant to share news on the project. NATO forces effectively destroyed the Great Man-Made River project when they bombed the pipeline and the factory producing the pipes necessary to repair it. Hence, the answer to why the West assassinated Gaddafi is clear. Money and oil and the security of the global financial system. Although some people in NATO countries may be motivated by humanitarian concerns, governments typically do not intervene in other nations solely to benefit humanity. Wars are often sold as acts of philanthropy, but generosity is rarely the primary motive for government intervention. After knowing all this, what do you think is why Muammar Gaddafi was killed? Was it because of the gold dinar and the plans of the United States of Africa that Muammar Gaddafi was proposing? Or was there any other reason we still don't know? Let us know your opinion on what would have happened if Muammar Gaddafi had been alive today. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.